Big Ed here, and today I have the final installment of my custom Remington 700. Uh, basically, I was interested in building a thousand yard rifle, something with a common caliber, and I wanted to build something on my own. You know, I looked at a lot of the uh, Remington 700 Sendaros, you know, and another, other, you know, custom rifles from like Red Hawk rifles and other stuff like that. And some of those, you know, they get really expensive, and I didn't have the money to just, you know, write out a check and buy one all at once so I built this over the last winter and I have a uh, four previous videos of building this you know with the stock installation you know the bipod the scope base the rings the scope you know and the the, the cheek piece and <clears throat> I had a lot of fun with it and here's our uh, gong right here we got a 12 inch half inch AR 500 plate right here I'm guessing the range on this is about 225 yards we can see it there just out of the center, bottom center of the screen. We've already tagged it a couple times. We're going to tag it a few more times for you folks. So let's just talk about what the rifle is first. It started off life as a Remington 700 varmint model in 308 Winchester. It's a 26 barrel, it is a 1 in 12 twist, and it is a, a short action. And the only thing that is original from this rifle is the bolt, the, the receiver, and the barrel and everything else has been swapped out on this rifle right here and the trigger assembly is still a stock too as the i believe it's the remington x uh, pro mark trigger um so let's just talk about quickly what i built and you can look at my previous videos for a deeper explanation of what i've done here um this is an hs precision stock right here this is a fully bedded aluminum stock the it has a det detachable magazine system and this is a five round magazine and this is a 10 round magazine right here for it, the uh, this was a wide detachable magazine system. These were single stack uh, 308 magazines right there. And I looked at the Badgers; they were cool, but they were four hundred dollars. I was able to get this set up for uh, for two uh, two hundred and fifty, and I was happy with that. At least I could get the ten round mag with it. You know, it's a little longer, but it's okay. I'm a big guy; I don't, it doesn't bother me. Uh, so the next upgrade I did is we put a Harris bipod on here, and one important note right here is with a Harris bipod, get the one with the notched legs right here. These things are pretty useless without the notched legs. That way, if you're putting the, if you're using the rifle, you can kind of just click it, and it'll go down a notch. And it won't just collapse, you know. And it's pretty easy to lower the rifle down. Um, and it just makes your life a lot easier. Uh, but Harris is excellent. That was about $100, $110 on eBay. <clears throat> and the next upgrade I did was, you know, it came with uh, two separate bases right here for the scope mount. And I knew that was no good. And so I, in, one of the benefits you get from putting a single piece base on here is it's stiffer. It stiffens up the whole receiver end of, of the rifle. And so I went with steel. I wasn't too worried about the weight of a rifle because if you make a tactical rifle like this, if you build one or buy one, you're adding a lot of weight to the gun. So it's a heavier gun. So I wasn't worried. So I went with TPS steel base and T TPS steel rings. Base was probably about $70, $75. The rings were about $100 for a pair. But basically I spoke to Tiboriosaurus Rex also on YouTube and he recommended TBS said, said that you're basically getting badger quality for, for less money because the badger rings were 200 and the bases were close to 200 so you know and I was really happy with that and that's still some you know some nice money $100 for a pair of rings is nice and, and the base is 70 years so you're so in but they're definitely quality pieces and I installed a bunch of scopes with, you know with less expensive rings and you can tell the, the value of these products right away when you start putting these things together um, and the next addition was the scope, and this is an SWFA 12 power scope right here, and the objective is uh, 42 millimeters. And I went with a fixed power because of basically budget reasons, um, and I wanted some, an, optic, an, an excellent optical clarity uh, with my scope. I wanted something that it would reach out far, you know, for a thousand yard rifle, and something that wouldn't break the bank. You know, I definitely wanted a variable power scope, but I, you know, <clears throat> I got this for three hundred dollars on the nose. I bought it right from SWFA, and this scope is phenomenal. I shoot this right next. My brother and I were shooting his rifle with this one. He has a Leopold VX1 on there, and this, this is a pleasure to look through this thing compared to the Leopolds. 
it's just it's brighter, it's clearer, it's just it's just it's, it's much nicer, and it's got a good eye relief on it, generous eye relief. You have a little room for movement, uh, but I, I love this scope. And if I do an upgrade That's a on this scope, good slapping I look right at there. The, uh, at, uh, about 225 yards. They make, a, I believe, a 4x12 version of this now for, I think, about 700 yards, and I would look at that because I'm so happy about this scope with this scope. And this is also a military-approved scope, too, the, these units, these WFA units. So these are great scopes. They're 100% reliable, and I've been really happy with this. And I'm also a big fan of mill dots. I've gotten away from MOA. I like mills better. Um, once you learn it, it's just like, it's a better system. Um, everything's... Um, so I'm a big fan of that. And basically when I built this rifle, one other quick point, um, bolt handle too. I'm not a big fan of the stock Remington bolt handles. You can use them. I used, I ran this rifle with it, but, uh, I sent the bolt handle away and I got it threaded. And I believe I paid like, it's like $65 for the service. And I just had a regular steel handle, you know, black steel handle put on there. But that was a nice, that's a really nice upgrade. This is a, a huge improvement. And if you don't like this bolt handle, you know, at least it's threaded, and you can just unscrew it and put on another bolt handle and get a badger or whatever you want to put on there. <clears throat> and then I had a friend help me put the cheek rest on here. And we, you know, I showed the rifle, we lined it up, and you know, drilled out our little holes right here and put on my cheek rest right here. In the future, I don't know if I would go this route again. And this stock was about three hundred and seventy-five dollars from HS Precision. I'd probably just cough up and spend the six fifty or seven hundred and get the one with the. It includes the cheek rest in it that rises and the butt plate that's extendable. Um, you can add, you know, pads on here, but the time you put this looks okay, and I'm, I'm happy with this. But by the time you do all this, spend the extra thirty-five dollars for the Scott piece, I, I don't know if it's worth it, you know, and, and, and drill the holes and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I think I might just wait till you know, save up a little bit more money, and, you know, because I plan another rifle build in the future, two more rifle builds I've planned. So the next thing was caliber, you know, when, when I bought this rifle, and I decided on uh, 308. I wanted a 30 caliber. I wanted something that was readily available where I could get hunting rounds off the shelf, and I could get you know cheap planking ammo, and I could also get good tar you know quality target ammunition off the shelves. So I went with 308, and I knew it was long barrel life. You know, I looked at 7 mag. Um, you know, and some other ones, 243, but, you know, I stayed away from my first big rifle build that was some considerable money from the barrel burning cartridges, you know, once I mean, long barrel life and extreme accuracy, you know, and I know you're maxing out a 308 at a thousand yards, uh, but I'm happy with that. And the funny thing was, is you build a rifle for a thousand yards, I don't even have a place to shoot it at a thousand yards. So that's a whole nother conversation we could, we'll talk about another time, but so this barrel's a 1 in 12 twist. It's optimized for the 168 grain bullets, like a Sierra Match King uh, 168. So I've got some hand loads worked up this. I've still not got it to the range yet with some 175s. I'm really hoping that this gun will shoot 175s well. And I think it, I think it will from what I've read because that's a 1,000 yard bullet is the 175s. I also have 155 Pamas loaded up too. So, you know, we're going to do some ladder tests and some testing on this rifle with my different loads I've worked up but this gun shoots 168 federals like night and day uh, <clears throat> you know I ran some I think 147 some cheap uh, NATO stuff through it and then uh, I ran some 180 grain Hornady hunting stuff it did not like the Hornady stuff that 180 grain is too heavy it was not stabilizing those well so my groups just opened right up and I was shooting like maybe three or four MOA at uh, you know at a hundred yards it was ugly this but, gun is the way it sits now my brother and I had it I was shooting bullseyes at 200 yards, um, and this is uh, it's a sub MOA gun. I haven't really measured it exactly. We just kind of did a rough estimate, but it's it's shooting sub MOA. Um, but it's it's a lot of fun to shoot. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was how much fun it was to build this gun. Ordering all the pieces, I I had a stock problem. I had to swap a stock back and forth from um, Red Hawk rifles. The original one I got with a vertical pistol grip on it, the barrel channel's too wide and the barrel was swimming in there. So I got the, I had to get the correct one. Uh, and Red Hawk rifles was excellent company to deal with and I recommend any high-end rifle build you want to do or buy, talk to them. They're good people and they know what they're doing and have a great selection. Um, so I got this stock right here, so it took a little bit of time. Also the rings too, I, I was playing around with the rings and first I got the Lowe's from TPS. 
they were, the scope was too high and I, I looked at the measurements and I knew I could go lower and get the scope lower. So I ended up getting the extra lows and as you can see, so I can't go any lower than extra low. So, uh, you know, I have a good fit right here in this, you know, the scope's as close as it's going to get to the bore. But it's a lot of fun. The detachable magazine system works great on, on this thing and it's a lot of fun. The other thing, so I had a lot of fun building this rifle. It was a lot of fun, a great learning experience, and this is a 20 MOA base on this rifle. But it was it was a lot of fun to put this together, and I'm already looking forward to building another one. Uh, the other thing, I enjoy shooting this. I like this more than my AR-15. This is the bolt on here, the magazine system. It's just cool. And now when I go to shoot a rifle, I want to shoot this. I want to shoot shoot the 308, my custom Remington 700. Something about just working that bolt back and forth. <clears throat> you know, it's fun. You know, picking up your brass, load, single loading them in there. You know, tailoring your hand loads. It's just this is a more fun gun for me to shoot than the semi-autos. You know, I kind of get out there with the AR. And I'll do some precision shooting with it, but a lot of it you're just like bam, 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 bam. You know, and you're just you know piling up bullets on a. 12 inch plate at 100 or 200 or 300 yards you know and it's it's that's great that's fun but it's this this is more fun and it's, it's more precise it is heavy though if this might not be I'm, I'm a big guy i lift a lot of weights uh, i don't have a problem carrying this rifle around uh but i, I probably added like like five pounds to it at least um uh, from its stock configuration the, the stock the factory's stock was all plastic, it was you know, injected molded plastic, it weighed nothing. Uh, I put a steel bipod on here, uh, uh, you know, steel magazines, uh, the, even though the magazine system is aluminum, you know, added steel rings and bases, that added a lot more weight. The scope's heavy, um, not that heavy though, because it's fixed focal power, a 12 power scope, uh, but it's, it's um, you know, it was a lot of fun. So. You know, if you've liked this video and you like this build of mine, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Um, you know, feel free to subscribe. Also, I, I love answering questions too. So go ahead and, uh, you know, answer some questions. And, um, you know, and especially questions about the build too. You know, I mean, I, I, I can't stress enough if, you know, build a rifle, buy it, you know, buy it pull it apart. And the other thing is sell the used parts on eBay. I sold the stock on eBay. I got $50 for an injected molded stock, a camel one on eBay. Somebody wanted it. Cool. Um, you know, the old rings, the bases, I sold those. Somebody wanted those. I sold those. The old scope, I, I got 40 bucks for it. It was a cheap scope. It came with a, uh, I think a 4 by 12 scope. Sold that. Um, you know, that was great, but, <clears throat> you know, Remington 700 custom. Go buy one. Go build one. Thanks for watching, folks. Yeah, more dog prompts. There's my water supply if I ever am out here a little too long. Uh, he's probably a good 50 yards away right now. So I didn't all the cap off and render that one liter of uh, Dasani water useless. But uh, I, since I cannot catch him, and uh, he's waited patiently today for me. Up the top is off. He's waited patiently today for me to finish shooting. I'm going to let him have that. And it looks like it has been destroyed. Rendered useless. But he left it standing upright.